And obviously, thank you to the Majority Leader, Standing Lawyer, for being with us today. Um, I, I do, we are here to uh, talk about our support for H.R. 676, the NATO Support Act. And, and we're here not just to show our support for that bill, but also to assert our nation's support for NATO, to answer anybody, anybody who questions the purpose of this alliance and to reaffirm the NATO pledge that an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. Now, I do believe that that mutual defense pledge is why NATO is the most successful military alliance in human history. It's an interdependency that has stood as a sturdy, strong, and sound anchor for a peace that has prevented new world wars, fostered Western prosperity, and advanced democratic governance. It has been the will of this nation, our nation, to lead and finance the defense of other NATO nations, which has allowed them to develop and prosper economically and to expand and evolve democratically. At the same time, though, we need to realize, people need to realize that Moscow never went to war with a NATO partner. We got bases and a guarantee that would never have, and that we'd never have to fight alone. Europe became our largest trading partner, our chief diplomatic and military companion as well. And everybody on the European continent got stability and peace to strengthen our democracy. Now, all of us up here agree that we can continue to pressure, pressure our NATO allies to pay their self-stated goal of 2% of their GDP to the alliance. But that doesn't mean that we want to get out of NATO. In fact, that would be a historic mistake. Because what we have to realize is that NATO is not just a transactional relationship. Our sole focus can't just be on who pays what and who gets what. Being a member of NATO is not like being a member of a country club. Instead, we value our NATO partners, and more importantly, we realize that the power of the NATO partnership is absolutely invaluable. The tangible results prove it, not just what we've seen in our history, but what we are seeing now and will continue, continue to see. In our enduring fight against terrorism, the NATO partner's will to join that effort was demonstrated just after hours after the 9-11 attacks, as partner nations volunteered to invoke Article 5. When I served in Afghanistan as an intelligence officer, I served and fought with many men and women from NATO nations. And I can tell you, I left that country in 2008, but after 17 years, NATO troops are still there serving alongside our sons and daughters in that effort. And when it comes to Russia, our NATO partners will continue to play an important role as a deterrent for their aggression, and they will continue to coordinate and collaborate as we not only ready for conventional war, but we also push back against Russia's constant use of hybrid warfare. NATO is instrumental is instrumental in setting us apart from Russia. See, we have allies that will stand by us. Russia does not. That's the foundation for our NATO partnership. That is the foundation for the NATO Support Act, an act that rejects efforts to withdraw from NATO and prohibits any funds to be used as such. It supports increased defense spending by NATO partners, as well as the funding of the European Deterrence Initiative to deter against Russia, Russian aggression. And it reaffirms our unwavering support of NATO not only as a mutual defense pledge, not only as a partnership, but as a proven core for an international order that favors democracy and peace. It is my absolute honor to not only stand in front of you to talk about the NATO Support Act and our support for it, but to introduce to you someone who has long been a stalwart supporter of our international partners, partners in NATO and been a long friend to me, and I'd like to introduce to you Majority Leader Standing Order. Thank you very much, Jimmy. <laughs> Congressman Panetta, of course, comes from a family that has made extraordinary contributions to the defense of our country and the strengthening of our alliances. Uh, his father, Secretary Panetta, and in so many different roles, uh, made sure that we were a more secure nation and that our alliances uh, were more trustworthy uh, and that they could rely on us as well. So, uh, Congressman Panetta, I want to congratulate you for introducing this piece of legislation. And I'm also proud to be here with uh, 
uh, two new members of the Congress of the United States, but not new at all uh, to the uh, support of uh, our security alliances and to our security uh, here and around the world. Uh, Tom Malinowski, an expert on foreign policy, an expert on uh, national security, and then, of course, Chrissy Houlihan from Pennsylvania, who served so honorably in the armed forces of the United States of America that an extraordinarily successful businesswoman understands how uh, we keep America strong uh, by promoting, uh, not denigrating, uh, the alliances we have uh, that provide that security. The NATO alliance is central uh, to the American security and man maintaining peace and stability around the world. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, as uh, Mr. Panetta has pointed out, is probably the most successful military uh, and political alliance uh, the world has seen. Seven decades where we've had no war across the European plain, uh, where so much carnage occurred historically. Uh, this year marks the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall and the revolutions that ended communism across Eastern Europe. I was serving as chairman of the Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe, affectionately known as the Helsinki Commission. I served as chairman of that commission for uh, ten, a decade. Uh, and then we went into the minority. Uh, but uh, in that position, I had a front row seat uh, to, the, to the history and the importance of the NATO alliance in bringing about a peaceful end to the Cold War. Now, one could say the Cold War continues, but the Soviet Union does not. Uh, and it was the NATO alliance, uh, along with the Helsinki Final Act, uh, that I think brought the uh, fall of that curtain. NATO has continued to build on the Cold War alliance and transform itself into an alliance to defend democracy in the 21st century. From Bosnia and Kosovo to Afghanistan and Libya, the NATO alliance has been a force multiplier uh, for the United States as we lead the free world in securing our safety and defense of freedom. Today, however, NATO is under threat, both from resurgent Russia without and detractors within. This bill, which we will consider today on suspension, and I know will pass, uh, I am hopeful that it will pass, uh, with a bipartisan vote, and I think it will pass with a bipartisan vote. This bill makes it clear that the United States Congress still believes that the NATO uh, mission and will prevent any short-sighted efforts to undermine NATO or unilaterally withdraw our country. I want to thank Representatives Panetta, uh, Representative Malinowski, and Representative Houlihan, and Representative Engel uh, for their leadership uh, on this issue, which is so critical to America's security. Uh, let me say that one of the first trips I took uh, in 2017, after uh, President Trump became president, was with four Republican members of the United States Senate, led by Lamar uh, Alexander, and then the chairman of the Appropriations Committee uh, was all, uh, in the Senate was also a member, Mr. Cochran. Uh, and I was the only Democrat. And we met uh, in Brussels with a number of NATO officials. And to a person, everybody in the delegation assured uh, the uh, NATO representatives that America was going to stand strong with them, that we would honor Article 5, uh, that we'd, be, we'd be, be there for them as they were there for us after 9-11, as they've been there for 70 years as we kept the peace. Uh, not perfectly, um, but uh, so that millions and millions did not lose their lives in another World War conflagration. So I thank uh, uh, Mr. Panetta. Uh, Mr. Malinowski, Ms. Houlihan, for their leadership on this issue, and I'm hopeful that this will pass uh, with a bipartisan vote saying that uh, no funds will be spent to withdraw the United States uh, from the NATO alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steny. Um, thank you, Congressman Panetta, for, uh, for leading us. Uh, in this effort. It, it is, in a sense, crazy that we have to be doing this, that we have to be doing this. It's both necessary and urgent. I believe it's necessary, first of all, because NATO is so important to our security. No alliance in history has done more to prevent war. No alliance is more rooted in the values that America champions around the world. 
Ever since the end of the Cold War, it has been our paramount interest in Europe to strengthen NATO and to extend it, an effort I was part of when I served in two administrations. By the same token, it has been Russia's paramount goal to weaken and divide NATO. If we were to do anything to weaken or divide it ourselves, or God forbid to withdraw from it, we would be doing our enemy's work for them. The second reason I believe it's necessary is because I take the President of the United States seriously. He has made no secret of his disdain for the NATO alliance and his willingness to consider leaving it. He's been consistent about this. It's part of his worldview. His approach to the world seems to be the opposite of the view that President Kennedy famously expressed. We will pay no price, bear no burden, meet no hardship, support no friend, oppose no foe, unless someone pays us to do it. And if NATO allies don't pay us to protect them, he doesn't see the point of NATO, as if the blood of their soldiers spilled alongside ours in every conflict since the Second World War does not count. The final reason this bill is necessary is that Congress is now the only check we have. In the first two years of this administration, the President was surrounded by advisors like Generals Mattis, McMaster, Kelly, Ambassador Haley, even Secretary Tillerson, who pushed back when he suggested abandoning America's commitments around the world or siding with foes against friends. They are all gone now. We are all that's left. It's urgent and essential, therefore, that the Congress play its constitutional role and take this action, especially with the 70th anniversary of NATO coming up this year with meetings that will be hosted by the United States in April of this year to mark that anniversary. In these unsettled times, we have to be an alternative voice for America in the world. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, and, uh, and, and, and thank you uh, thank you all. I'm uh, Elliot Engel. I'm uh, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs, House Foreign Affairs Committee. I want to thank my colleague, Mr. Panetta, for introducing this bill and to our other uh, leaders in, in, in Congress. I'm glad to join all my colleagues here in sending a clear bipartisan signal about the House's support for the NATO alliance. For seven decades, NATO has been the cornerstone of transatlantic peace and security. This is the alliance that won the Cold War that brought peace to the Balkans, and that came to America's defense after we were attacked on September 11th, and still continues to support us in our war theaters to include Iraq and Afghanistan. It's quite simply the most successful political military alliance in world history. But it's not just about history. Today, NATO plays a critical role in keeping an increasingly aggressive Russia in check. And that's one of the reasons splintering the NATO alliance is one of Vladimir Putin's top goals. And that's why it's so disturbing, that troubling, to see the United States sending mixed signals about our commitment to the alliance or treating it as a burden. You know what a burden would be? A burden would be the United States trying to conduct foreign policy without allies, without 28 other countries that share our values and have fought alongside American troops, sharing the burden of lost blood and treasure at times. So in a few minutes, the House will take up the NATO Support Act, Mr. Panetta's legislation. It reaffirms Congress's support for the alliance and would prohibit any withdrawal from NATO. I'm glad that we're going on record early in this Congress to voice our continued support for NATO. The President, you don't know what he supports. One day it's here and one day it's over there. But for the Congress, we strongly support NATO. I predict that this bill will pass with overwhelming bipartisan support. And again, I'm grateful to my colleagues for their hard work on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Kinnell. Uh, clearly, everybody has nearly said everything that's worth saying about this subject, so I'm going to just try and bring it to the personal. My name is Chrissy Houlihan. I represent Pennsylvania 6. Today is my very first day being on the Foreign Affairs Committee. But more relevant to this conversation, I'm the daughter and granddaughter of survivors of the Holocaust. My family and many families like mine here in America came here originally as, as, as refugees, and we know personally all too well the dangers of authoritarian regimes. I'm also a third-generation veteran. 
My grandfather served in the Korean War, my father in the Vietnam War, and I personally served in the Cold War, the tail end of the Cold War myself, during a time when we needed more than ever to stand with our allies against the Soviet Union, and it worked. Fast forward some 30 years since I left the military, and those alliances are still just as essential as ever to counter the aggression that we see from nation states, such as Russia and China, and to protect our national security and the values that we hold dear as Americans. We can and should encourage our allies and partners to invest in, the def in defense and to participate fully in multinational and multilateral organizations like NATO. However, walking away from our own commitment to this organization would be a tragic mistake. Leaving NATO is helpful only to Russia and to China, who want to see an erosion of le U.S. leadership in the world. NATO safely helped us get through the Cold War, and it and other alliances like the EU continue to preserve our liberal democracy and market capitalism during these very dangerous times. I echo the concern of my colleagues where it feels as though I shouldn't have to stand here and even say these words. As a member of the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committee, I am proud to be a co-sponsor of this bipartisan legislation because it sends a strong signal that Congress values our alliances. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to all of you for being here. We'd be happy to entertain any questions. Um, hi, uh, Arit John with Bloomberg. Um, this is a question for the freshmen. Um, you both ran as like national security experts on issues like NATO and keeping a good relation with our allies. But could you talk a little bit about how the shutdown has sort of um, sort of drowned all that out? When you guys go and talk to your constituents, are you able to bring up issues like this, or is it just all? Is everyone just asking about shutdown? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our our number one job is to open the government, and and that is a it's a bread and butter issue for folks in all of our districts. It's safe to say, but it's also a national security issue. And since we're talking about national security here, I, I think um, it's fair to say that in addition to wanting us to leave NATO, uh, Russia would love to see the United States government shut down for as long as possible. And so I think these two issues are thematically linked in, in that way. Um, now, um, I think, you know, there is some urgency in doing this right now. I mean, I'd love to wait until the shutdown is over before getting to issues of foreign policy and national security, but we don't have that luxury. As I mentioned, the NATO summit is coming up. There are all kinds of signals being sent around the world that we feel it's important for the United States Congress to counter when they run counter to our interests. And so that's why you will see this very early action this week on this bill. Chrissy, do you want to add anything? Sure. I would echo much of what you just said, which is my community uh, understands that we can worry about the shutdown and worry about national security at the very same time. And in some cases, they're linked with one another. So I think that my community is very anxious to see us do our jobs here and get the government open, but just as anxious to make sure that we're taking care of the issues that brought us here. And those issues are not just issues of national security, but also health care, um, jobs, and education. And all of those things were also advancing, even during a shutdown. So I think one of the messages I bring back to my community is that we're working very hard to open the government, but that we're also working very hard on the issues that brought us here in the first place. Uh, Joe Gould from Defense News. Um, I was wondering if um, if one of you could address maybe the constitutional issues that this that this raises. Um, is there uh, is there a, have you looked into um, whether this is whether this can, you can do this legally, um, or is it meant to send a message? And if it's if it's um, if it's the former, um, what's the likelihood that that this that something similar could come up in the Senate or um, Sorry, go ahead. Well, what, what, what we're seeing is the Senate. Uh, Mike, please. Step up, Mike, step please. Up, please. Thank you. The Senate has a similar bill uh, right now that talks about how they need to pass a certain, it needs to pass what, like two thirds of the Senate in order to withdraw from NATO. And so uh, I, I believe that uh, once this bill passes tonight on a bipartisan uh, manner, in a bipartisan manner, that it will get to the Senate and things will be worked out over there when it comes to uh, passing this type of bill. Uh, in regards to the constitutionality, um, I think all we're dealing with is something uh, that is under the purview of the United States Congress, and that's the power of the purse. And so basically what we are saying is that if there is any intention to withdraw from NATO, then there will be no funds that are going to be used uh, to do that. 
if I could just add, it's, it's often been said that the Constitution is an invitation to struggle. And what we are saying here is that we are not leaving NATO without a struggle from the United States Congress. Hi. Uh, why would it cost money to leave NATO? Okay. Everything costs money. It costs money to move furniture. It costs money to move troops. It costs money to pay the personnel who would have to be involved in such an enormous undertaking after decades of, of our military being uh, not just our country flying its flag at NATO headquarters, but our military being embedded in NATO in, in all kinds of complicated ways, uh, you bet you it would cost a lot of money. And we have the power of the purse, as Congressman Panetta uh, mentioned. Um, on that shared security issue, um, could you talk a little bit about what you think would be the most effective solution at the border? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to talk a little bit about that. Um, I think it's a combination of solutions, and, I, and I'm um, an engineer by education. I'm also an entrepreneur and a business person, happen to be a veteran, also a mom. So I think it's all of a combination of solutions. First of all, the solutions need to be cost effective and they need to be efficient. And so sometimes those solutions aren't necessarily a barrier of any form. They are technologically more advanced and also more efficient use of our, of our resources and the power of the purse that we have. We also need to make sure that those solutions are humane and that we're addressing things like expanding the court or adding uh, human beings to the, to, the, to the border to be able to be more helpful there as well. So it's a plethora of solutions, but not one of them is a sea to shining, shining sea wall of any form, uh, steel or concrete in my opinion. Great. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you on the House floor. Appreciate your participation in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.